I want to get the concept of bleed versus no bleed across to you. And I'm going to show you in a photo as well as a printed page. And then we'll talk a little bit about the ideas behind it. Look inside the Discover area for videos on practically uh, creating this. So how to set up the bleed, in other words. So first off, let's take a look at these two beautiful photographs from a uh, national park. The one you see on the right, the image goes all the way to the edge of the page. I don't know if you can, I'm going to annotate it here for a second. Uh, you see that it goes all the way to the edge of the page here. And the image on the left, you'll notice that there's a gap of white around the edge of the page. Um, the image on the left is said to not bleed. In other words, the image does not print to the edge of the page, whereas the image on the right prints all the way to the edge of the page. Let's take a look at that in a printed item. Here we have two posters. Um, on the right, you'll see something that does not have a bleed. So there's this white border that basically goes all the way around the image. And usually the width of that border is whatever the safe area or live area that you're told is. So for our class, I like to use a quarter of an inch for people just starting out. A quarter of an inch is a good number. It's easy to remember and the math is easy enough because if you double a quarter, you have a half. So this is uh, going to be for our class purposes about a quarter of an inch you have to keep everything away from the edge and you're going to have that border around the outside as you can see here you can get a good quality result doing that it is considered a little bit less professional in many circles to not bleed bleed is preferable it is something that you're going to see a lot when you look at magazine covers when you look at books when you look at almost any printed item it's a desirable trait to actually have a full bleed. So on the right we have no bleed, on the left we have a full bleed. And you'll notice the printing, whether it be an image, a color, whatever, goes all the way to the edge of the page. So if I'm going to annotate here, you'll see that we've got items that go all the way to the edge of the page. Now, the way they do that, the way that we actually achieve that, is we have a page that we are going to print to that is in fact larger than our document setup. So a very important thing to keep straight is that a document size is what you set up inside of Adobe Illustrator. A page size is what a printer uses. And a lot of printers use standard page sizes, things like 8.5 by 11, 11 by 17, etc. However, documents can be anything. I can do a 6 by 6 inch document. I can do an 8 by 8. I can do an 8 by 10. You get the idea. As long as the program or the software can handle it, you can set up a document to any size. The page size is the size of paper that your printer will provide. And as you see here, in order to get this 8.5 by 11 inch poster, we actually have an 8.5 by 11 inch page here. We can't print all the way to the edge of the page we actually need to print past that. So if we were to look at this document before they trim it on a big drop blade press to cut it out, you'd see that it prints out about a quarter of an inch past the edge of the page. And then we actually need a piece of paper that's even bigger than that yet. So we have a piece of paper that's probably bigger than our bleed area. You'll hear things like tabloid bleed for a page size where you have a tabloid page is 11 by 17 and a tabloid bleed would be 12 by 18. That's giving you that extra space to accommodate the bleed that you build into the document. All right, let's take one last look at something for our research area. When stop annotating. We'll take a look at, and I've got a diagram inside our course shell that's quite similar. This is from uh, a company called Trillion Creative that is trying to educate their clients on, on understanding bleed. The way it works is our blue line here indicates our trim size. So it's indicating the size that we want the finished product to be. So if I want it to be 8.5 by 11, I set up my document size for whatever the trim is. Document, let's see if I can do this here, document. That's horrible looking type, equals trim.
Okay. So whatever our trim size is, that's what we want to set our document up to be. The safe area I like to call live area uh, because it creates a lovely acronym, BLT or BTL, um, is where you need to keep anything that's integral. So let's say you had serial numbers that you're going to print. Here's a serial number. It needs to be kept inside this live area, which is a certain number of space from the edge of the page. So that during the production process, when you're printing 50,000 of these very quickly and the page shifts ever so slightly, we don't risk cutting that off completely in the production process. So that's the live area or the safe area. And then uh, the bleed is, of course, the line that goes past the edge of my page. And they are using red to demonstrate that here. So we got the line that goes past the edge of the page that we need to, in fact, take any background items or anything that's touching the edge of the page to. So that's our bleed area. Uh, you can see that from outside to in, you have the acronym BTL for bleed trim and live area, or safe area as this particular company lists it. So you want to keep that in mind. The document size is always equal to the trim. The page size needs to be equal to um, probably a quarter inch or more larger than what the uh, bleed size is. And if you understand those concepts, you'll be very, very comfortable setting up bleed for documents.